All right, folks. You're listening to Spoonful of Tunes, and we got some guests in here with us, finally. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm Abby the Spoon Lady, and y'all want to introduce yourselves? All right. Chick Curtis, uh, bass. Oh, I'm, I'm Jim Lockhart, and I make noise on guitars and stuff. Uh, I'm Wade Battle, and uh, I do own some guitars. Awesome. <laughs> and you all came up from Nashville, and so I wanted to do some talking today a little bit about the differences between Nashville and Asheville busking and, and how we can improve our situation here in using uh, Nashville as an example. All right, I, I'm all about that. Don't be, anything, <laughs> don't be anything like Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> now, here, here at the top of the hour, we're going to be giving Robin Bernard a call. All oh, right, good. Robin. Oh. And uh, we'll chat with him on the phone for a moment, and we'll get a Nashville I, update for, for oh, him. I, I bet you would get a good perspective. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's something else. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I was planning to call Robin before you all came in and decided that you were going to come up to Asheville. It just kind of happened to time out that way, which right. is a little odd, but that's okay, and we'll work with it. So I guess this is the Busker Broadcast Nashville edition. We're going to talk some serious politics and try to embarrass the holy out of Nashville <laughs> for the things that they do. I'm not. I, I ain't afeard. I ain't afeard. I ain't afeard. I ain't afeard. I'm afeard for them. All right. So I don't know. Maybe maybe we should let our listeners kind of understand a little bit about what we're talking about when it comes to the music that y'all play. I mean, did you y'all want to start out with a song or? Sure. This is your show. You tell yeah. us what. Oh, I'm. Well, this is your. It. This is your show It's your show today. It's everything that isn't wrong with country music today. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, hey, Chick, what do you want to grab your bass and let's uh, let's start them off, and we'll we'll give them an example of what we've been trying to do in, 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 in Nashville. It's not really a bass. It's a wash tub, is what I'm playing. That's pretty country. A wash tub. Here, why don't you put that down? I'm going full on mountain. Uh, Music. Well, we are in the mountains, apparently. We don't, we don't like it like that. It's still okay right there. Okay. All right. All right, let's do something, guys. Take it, Jim. What are we going to do? When she left, I stayed stone for so long that I didn't even realize she was gone. When the black turned to light, I knew she wouldn't be coming home tonight, tomorrow, or anymore. So I'm mixing that elixir, hoping it'll fix her memory and all of the reasons I can't get high anymore. I just get even. Well, I killed our kids' piggy bank By what I intended to drink When the light turns to day I won't have hell to pay She ain't got my number anymore So I'm mixing an elixir Hoping it'll fix her memory And all of the reasons I can't, I can't get, get high, high anymore. anymore Just get even So I'm mixing an elixir Hoping it'll fix her memory and all of the reasons I can't get high anymore Just get even Well, no, I can't get high anymore Oh, but I'll get even It's a love song. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> 
Thanks, sir. All right. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some politics. Um, we talk about Nashville busking, a little bit of history about your spoon lady. You said you spend a lot of time down there doing street bands. And uh, uh, Jim Lockhart here used to play in some of these street bands and one very important street band called Free Dirt, which kind of reigned downtown Broadway for, for a while as far as street performance is concerned. And for a while was... Um, about the only regular band down there for, for a very long time, which is pretty sad, you know. And yeah. some people were like, oh, well, you don't have competition. But to us, we, we really wanted other bands down there. Yeah, it was pretty epic. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and the thing about it is I agree with you because when you, play, you call it Music City, they should be music around there, you know, when they do so. so. Right. And, and, and people don't put two and two together when they think about the things that – tie into each other when we talk about um, our homeless population the safety amongst us you know in, in a downtown area um, how it improves and doesn't improve how you know amongst you know with complaints and and, and other sorts of crime issues that there might be panhandling um, Nashville has a large amount of people with um, that aren't quite buskers they're just Kind of I there. Want, I just want to say they played Nashville, so they'll they'll come through town, and they'll you see kids all the time coming through town. You see kids all the time coming through town, and they'll just want to stop in Nashville just to say they played it. I've seen a bunch of them. You know, there's I, also people that panhandle with guitars. They and just have guitars, and that's what they hold while they ask people for money. Right, which I mean, is a and, performance of sort. <laughs> yeah, but ownership of a guitar doesn't mean that you have the, the right to put that on everybody. <laughs> well, you know, and one of our issues here isn't so much that, you know, we don't have the the guy with one string on their guitar chasing uh -huh. people down the street. And it's not to say, and, and, and I do not in any shape or form want to say that that person does not have the right to come out and play music, but chasing somebody down the street with one string on your guitar, on your guitar kind of makes this a different kind of issue. You just have to look, I mean, you just have to really talk to someone to know if they're legitimate out there, that, you know, and serious musician. It's kind of talk to them a while to, you know, figure them out. And most legitimate musicians, they're, they're, they're out there. They're not drinking, trying to panhandle. They're out there really enjoying playing music. You know, when well, I, I think that's true, and the, I always say the proof is in the picking too. I mean, if you just if you're not if you're not playing anything good, you what you do you're like the weakest link, and it breaks the chains because it makes us it it kind of dumbs us all down and puts us all on a level, you know. And they, we all get grouped right. into. I think we're judged <clears throat> by that. Okay, so let me let me give you an example from Asheville. Okay, this is this is a day in Asheville busking let's say it's the middle of the season and i'm going to come out and i'm going to stand in back of somebody who's already playing at say the flat iron sculpture and they have one hour left of their busking turn because we take two hour turns and i'm going to set up after their one hour and i'm going to play my two hours and during that two hours my crowd is going to get large enough that technically i'm causing an issue so i'm going to shout out to folks hey get out of the road and so on and so forth and and every once in a while, police officer is going to roll by and wave at me and be very, very nice. No That's issues. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I make I, a few bucks and I go home. Or I come here to the radio and I tell you about it. So I go to Nashville. And I'm getting up at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning to go stand at 2nd of Broadway. You know, and given the fact that I used this, I, it's been a while since I've done the whole Nashville thing because I kind of ran away screaming a little bit. <laughs> but, um, you know, 6, 7.30 in the morning, I go downtown. I get some coffee from Mike's Coffee, you know, and sometimes they, they would, wouldn't be open yet, but they'd still bring me out some coffee, which is very nice of them. And I'd wait for everyone else to show up. And usually, eventually, by 11 or 12 o'clock, everybody would show up, and we'd play a lunch set, and we would stay there. And we would stay there all day. 
And we would play three to four sets in a day, but we would stay there because if we left, then we wouldn't have a spot again. Yeah. And that was it. Or we wouldn't have a spot that wasn't too loud for us to be heard mm-hmm. or not appropriate for the crowd size that we were drawing. Nowadays, too, if I go into Nashville, I'll, let's say it's the middle of the day, I go, I set up. Five minutes later, I have some police officer telling me it's illegal for me to sit down. Mm. It's not illegal for me to sit down. Meanwhile, across the street, a police officer is telling somebody that it's illegal for them to have amplifiers. It is not illegal for them to have amplifiers. Meanwhile, the next week, we have a police officer telling somebody else that there are all these new laws in place and this and that and that they have to have a permit, creating this long, extravagant lie to get rid of somebody. That is not true whatsoever. And we have these issues over and over and over again. And because of that, the good musicians, the good street performers, who these, these, these practiced and talented bands that we have in places like New Orleans and in Asheville, don't set up and stay local in Nashville whatsoever. Be, because they aren't treated well. We should be protected by the First Amendment to set up on any corner to do what we want. <laughs> well, Rules it's, of sedition well, a lot, so... Hey. You know, and, and you can talk about the First Amendment, but, you know, that go, kind of goes into uh, a different... I mean, it's the same discussion, but that, that goes down a different rabbit hole. And, and That's the source, <laughs> isn't it? I, I don't know, but, I, you know, I, I personally am not a constitutional absolutist, so... Right. Well, I think the main, you know, the main thing is just is is the just the gray vague area of of just coming up with whatever thing they want to tell you to get you off the street. You know, when it's it's not maybe true and it it, it hurts, man. You know, people don't want to the good musicians don't want to have the to deal with that. The police officers are lying to people. They're they are lying to people. What can they do? They can they take it to jail? If they can't take it to jail, then they write you a ticket. Then somebody needs to take a ticket and take it into court and just let, you know, get them thrown out. And take the ticket. You know, eventually, maybe uh, it'll get resolved one day about playing on the streets anytime you want to, with any amp you want, with as loud as you want. And no, not as loud as you want. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, I'll tell you that starts a different conversation. Well, speaking of the speaking of I the mean, amp as as of the amp of thing bars. of the amp thing that we're talking about amplification. All right, in Nashville, all the bars always have speakers that are out their windows pointing toward the street okay right. blaring and it's really loud and you really hardly have a choice if you want to be heard to get amplified so i mean i don't understand the difference and between plus them so being loud people. and us being loud i don't understand that that's why with I so many people so on the streets on it's so loud too you can't hear an acoustic guitar out there anymore when it gets that busy and they had a case in New York subways where it was deemed they tried to shut down the amplifiers in the New York subways. And it was deemed that it wasn't the amplifiers that was too loud, that the people, surrounding people in the traffic was, was loud. Well. And, you know, there's loopholes, there's, there's whatever. I'd like to remind all of our listeners out there that we are playing tonight. <laughs> yes. All right. Let, let me let me tell you this. Okay. Let let's let's put this back in into perspective. Okay. So, what do you feel? And I want to ask you, Jim. <coughs> what do you feel would happen if in Nashville the bar were raised, meaning the police department stopped poking at all the street performers, good and bad? You know what I mean? They, I mean they they actually took the time to let performers set up and do their thing. Um, and raise the bar in that way, allowing for performers to be able to make a few bucks as they come through and promote street performing on a very basic level. That's how it used to be, but the thing is, is a lot of good street performers don't even come through Nashville anymore because you really don't know what to expect because the rules change from night to night. And well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rules change from night to night, and they come up with they, they they come up to you, and they and they you know they say something isn't allowed that is allowed, and it used they used to uh, be more of good people coming through, and now because no one knows what to expect, they just don't come anymore. So the bar has just been dropped right on the ground. There's you, there's not a lot of talent coming through or playing on the street in Nashville, and that's that's just how it's turned out. Now, 
made a permit, they could weed out all of the bad performers because most of the only good performers would want to pay to play on the streets, you know. That would weed out a lot of the riffraff. Yeah, but doesn't that take away the magic? I mean, I mean. We're talking about First Amendment. (laughs) (laughs) That goes for riffraff, too. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, okay, okay. Well, well, if you can't have your first minute, then you can pay for it. <laughs> All right, so, so something that I life. looked up this morning. Okay, so per capita, meaning, you know, percentage of population. Asheville actually has twice the homeless population as Nashville as percentage-wise. Asheville? Asheville does. I haven't seen it. Well, well it's a smaller town. It's a, yeah. Well, it's a much smaller town. Now... Now, given that, and think about the scaling aspect of this, in, Nash, in Nashville, you have a lot of issues where people posing, quote, I'm using air quotes, folks, posing as street performers when they are not street performers, or they're not musicians, or they're too inebriated, or whatever the, the, the issue people. is. And we're not just talking about homeless folks doing this. We're talking about non-homeless folks, folks... Um, who live in the surrounding neighborhoods, so on and so forth. Um, and travelers coming through. Mm-hmm. Now, um, you know, and, 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 and given that we're talking about the big deadly gray area that surrounds busking. Um, but if the bar were raised and street performers were allowed to set up and perform in, Ash- in Nashville, Tennessee, and and more consecutive bands, more bands that would come through and, like, you know, that had a decent playlist and a decent crowd and decent performance style Mm -hmm. and knew what they were doing and looked professional even, came through when we're playing, then you would have less and less people doing those such actions, such as having the one string on the guitar, um... You know, and, and doing subpar performances. Mm-hmm. If you look around Asheville, we do have issues, but nothing near what Nashville is like. Because our the bars raised high here. There's a lot of extremely talented performers who are allowed to thrive. Whether it's on a very basic level or not, they're allowed to thrive. Yeah, every Yahoo with a guitar on his back thinks he has to go through Nashville and play it, so that's... Right. Where that comes from. Well, Nashville's, Nashville's a different a animal. cliche. Well, you're always going to have those those guys who come down for a night or two that come into town. They just want to busk on Broadway. And that's cool. That's part of the American dream, the country dream, the dream of what what was the land of the mother church of the country music. Oh, yeah, the Wyoming. Yeah. It's Joseph Hank Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your favorite place to play music, Jim? Uh, usually in a, in a bar. <laughs> or did you mean geographically? Well, geographically. I got several favorite places when you're talking about street performing. I like Nashville because it's kind of my home away from home. I love Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Boulder, Colorado, and New Orleans. And, yeah. Where busking do you feel like you earn the most solid income? Probably Nashville. You feel like it? Yeah, I, I guess. It's hard to say. It's just getting hit and miss. The thing they've started doing in Nashville is, is they have the bars are open, have their windows open with their PAs just blowing into the street. And so the, the environment is quite loud. And so people have to use amplification on the street to be heard at all. It's it's the exact opposite of, of what it is here in Asheville, where you know Asheville you can hear a pin, a pin drop. It's nice and quiet here, and it's not inebriated here because it's not a bar thing. But the Nashville Main Street is just kind of all honky tonk after honky tonk. We are a beer city, you know that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you also got you also got the nice the nice restaurants and the and the and the art shops, and I saw a wig store. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see David Allen Co. I might need to get me a wig. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. All right, well, 
We've got uh, 15 minutes to the top of the hour. You feel like playing another one, and then maybe I'll give us some announcements? Sure. sure. What do you want? Something heavy or something light? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so, so, y'all, if you're downtown um, over this week, uh, these fellers are going to be downtown, even on the weeknights this week, um, busking and playing music. So if you see them, and I'll post some pictures of them here in a little bit. If you see them, I want you to stop and say, hey, I heard, I heard you on the radio, and say hi. And... Uh, yeah, and they, they are looking for, for, for a band name. Maybe you can give them a suggestion. We're open yeah. to suggestions. But come we're, by we're, 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 the, we're, the three, we're the three guys playing guitars and tub, and we have, a, we, have a C, we have CDs in our case that have has an orange RV on the cover, so that's how you know it's us. An orange RV I orange used RV. to live in. <laughs> yeah, <one> minute. <coughs> All right. Um, hold on, let, me, let me get this here camera roll, and we'll get you going. So, yeah. so, uh, how long are you going to be in town? Uh, we, and uh, we're not sure. Anywhere from the rest of the day to the rest of the week, to we, we really don't, we don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. We're having we've we've only been here a very short while since yesterday and we're already having a ball. We've we've already met some of the uh, locals here that come by and they've been very nice and you know, you know, it, it's it's a breath of fresh air. It really is. It's very nice up here. The folks are so nice here. I love it here. It's pretty here. It's nice here. Mark Knox was kind of about the same thing. <laughs> All right. Well, would you do it? All right. Whatever. Check. <laughs> All right, this is this is this is a really serious love song. <laughs> where well, she got him through all the winter. He made a lot of money when the sun would shine. She made damn good lunch and dinners. She joined in, he got on the wine, and he loved her, she adored him, pledged to God, the love that they had found, a well-kept secret, Smith and Wesson, put you in the ground, all the town knew she didn't have a clue, that he had another lust around. A well-kept secret, Smith and Wesson, put you in the ground. He loved her so much he couldn't bear her to know That he had another lust around But well-kept secrets and Smith and Wesson's Put you in the ground Well, she didn't work that day, it began to rain Knew that he would be down at the bar Well, his birthday, come tomorrow she pulled his gift from the trunk of her car Well, he would have loved it Brand new pistol She walked in, they bled for the lust they'd found Well-kept secrets Smith and Wesson's Put you in the ground Well-kept secrets Smith and Wesson's Put you in the ground folks so uh, 
Announcements, announcements. Nashville's kind of slowing down. It's that time of year, so it's Nashville, so to speak. So, it is what it is. <laughs> um, I, uh, I've got a band coming in. The American Gonzo's band is coming in next week, so make sure that you tune in for that, where I make them sign a promissory note saying that they are going to come out busking and then come back in and talk to us about their experiences. This is a very important experiment. <laughs> I like have it. bar bands go out on the street and try it for once and then hear what they've got to say about it because I really want to That hear would it. be very interesting, actually. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, so in, in Asheville, just a little bit, um, you do not have to have a permit to come out street performing. So one of the things that, that you can do is come out and give it a shot and give it a try. And uh, if you're curious to know about how to, what to, what do you need to know, where should you go, you can contact the Asheville Buskers Collective at Asheville Buskers Collective at gmail.com or you could find us on the internet at avlbuskers.org or Facebook. Um, I highly suggest you walk around and talk to your other talk to the other performers as we all kind of know each other and that's how information travels. They'll kind of show you around and and whatnot, you know, folks here are pretty good about that, and so I encourage you to do such. All right, my events are pulling up on my computer here. Skijoni Charlatans today, tonight at the Toy Boat Community Art Space. Uh, this is December seventh, Monday. Um, so tonight at eight thirty p.m. Um, there's Asheville City Council meeting December 8th, which is tomorrow, December 8th, which is a Tuesday, at the Asheville City Hall. Um, if I remember right, we're, we're talking there about the BB&T Hotel, the I-26 Connector, and the St. Lawrence Green Petitions. These are all things that folks have really been talking about recently in our Facebook feeds, so uh, you can talk about all three of them at once here at this city council meeting, which I think I might be popping up and showing up for that one. Um, the auditorium presents the Schizoni Charlatans again, um, which is Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. And the band that I am playing with, the Fly By Night Rounders, will also be playing, and that's December 9th at the auditorium. It's $6. Um, uh, you, can, you can figure out all the info on the interweb. <laughs> <laughs> the interstate? On the inter... Don't, don't be flowing around on the interstate. You can, uh, you can get some viruses. <laughs> 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 nice. Yeah. I, 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 we were just talking about that. You remember when going viral was a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> All right, so we've also got a Stevie Lee Combs event, Juke Joints and Jive, Friday at 8 o'clock at the joint next door. Um, so that's December 11th, Friday at 8 o'clock. Um, now, I'm going to say again, the Burger Bar every Friday has live music, and that's always really fun. Um, there are a lot of busking bands. Uh, I don't think this Friday, Vaden Landers is going to be playing, but I'm sure that they will be finding another applicable band that rocks. <laughs> Um, the Resident Rogues is having Balk at Night on uh, Friday at 9 p.m. at the Crow and Quill. That's December 11th, Friday, the same night. Um, and they're real fun. Uh, the Resident Rogues, you got Sparrow and Keith. Uh, totally worth it. Totally Spoon Lady approved. Uh, at December 12th at the Burger Bar, we got Tom Waits for No Man. It's a Steely Lee Combs event, and that's always a little bit fun. Sometimes he's got old Willie hanging out there playing chicken coop with him. Um, <laughs> nice. Chicken Tom coop waits Willie. for no one? Tom waits for no man. For no man. I like that. Um, we've got 
Wham Bam Puppet Slam hoist at the to- at the toy box uh, uh, at the toy box's birthday. Um, and so musical guests Fable Cry and the Resonant Rogues. So if you haven't been to one of these puppet slams, it's kind of fun. It's on the Moth Light. At the Moth Light, you can get the tickets over the interweb. Um, we also got Boxcar Blues with Nosedive at the French Broad Brewing Company. And Rip and Rob Nosedive is just really, really awesome. Uh, Sly Blues, totally worth it to go see. Um, I might be showing up to that one. A bunch of my buddies be, might be showing up to that one. Totally worth it. Uh, we've also got... Hmm, let's see. Let's go down my feed. That would be the end of my feed there. So if you've got events, let me know, abbyspoonlady at gmail.com, or you can send us a message at wpvmfm.org. We're going to take a quick break and stretch our legs, come back, and kind of poke around a little bit more uh, about Nashville, and maybe play a few tunes and talk a little bit more politics. I'm extremely mad at Nashville. I hope you can hear that in the tone (laughs) of my voice. Also, She's when we get your finger. a very large, large foam finger. <laughs> <laughs> if Nashville would let us play music, we could we could make a living. You know, <laughs> the street performers could make a good one. Good, if you're good, you could make a living on the street if they would let you. But I know, I know, they won't. Well, we're going to talk about that when we get back, and we're also going to be talking with our good buddy Robin Bernard. So, hey, Robin Bernard, if you're waiting for us to call you, we'll call you right when we get back. I promise you, we will. Um, so I can't wait to talk to Robin. <laughs> All right, so let's see. What do I want to put into our system here? Let's play a little bit of Chris Rodriguez, and uh, and then maybe after that, some. Um, hmm, what else do oh, do I want to play? I'll play uh, one of these Vaden Landers tracks that we recorded last week. That would be a good thing to do. Let's do that. So let's start out with a little bit of Chris Rodriguez, and we'll go on from there. All right, folks.
listening to WPZM LP 103.7 FM in Asheville. You can listen online at WPZMFM.org. Stay tuned. We're going to give our buddy Robin Bernard a call here in a few minutes. Thank you. Jonestown Blues from Gus Cannon. Perfect.
I saw him But I've seen his signs Nowhere he been Keep him summer home in Orleans Cause he like it hot And he loves him You know when he calls He loves to hear his name Promises to be there that you crave Walk through doors, run up mountains Looking for that float I found Damn sure put you in an early grave Um, so we are back to Busker Broadcast. I figure we might be giving our friend Robin a buzz here in a second. Um, but that right there was, uh, was y'all's newest thing you recorded, right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we got a seven song disc that we just finished, uh, doing. We're gonna, we got another seven or so that we're gonna record for a full length record, but seven's quite a few. Yeah. Now you do a lot of writing. Um, is, was that one one of yours? Yeah, that's one that uh, Wade and I wrote together. Wade Battle over there. Howdy. Yeah. All right. So we got we got Wade Battle and Jim Lockhart and Chick Curtis, the Tasmanian squirrel here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and these are some really awesome uh, Nashville folks. I figure. Uh, let's give Robin a buzz real quick and talk to Robin. Hold on, I gotta find where we pull up Mr. Robin's number. I bet he's got some good jokes ready for us. <laughs> oh, he's he's probably been waiting. Got him up on the speaker here. I hear that going on. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Robin. Hello? Hi, Robin. Hello? <laughs> oh, it's an answering machine. Oh, okay. You reach Robin. Leave your name and number, I'll call you back. It Thank really you. is. <laughs> you one of them? Yeah, he's Why one of them. Why does he do that? <laughs> <laughs> he's oh, one of them. Perfect. He's got me a couple of times with that. I'm calling him again. I'll speed dial him until he answers. Speed dial him. Blow him up. It's, going, it's ringing again. And Come on, Robin. Paid. Robin? Hello? Hello? He got you oh, again. it's an answering machine. You reach Robin. Leave your name and number. I'll call you back. Thanks. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> well, we'll yeah. try in a moment, or maybe we'll just wait for him to call us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. We can wait for him to call us, I guess. Anyway, um, we were talking a little bit about Nashville and politics, and so I guess while we're waiting for Robin to give us a buzz, uh, we can 
maybe continue that conversation a little bit. And one of the things I, I wanted to maybe mention about the differences between these two cities is that... Is it, it's an and. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Is that there's it's more than just an end, folks. It's the difference between Asheville and Nashville as well. She's trying to say. Well, Nashville is is a very dirty, seedy place, and and historically it always kind of has been. Um, ever since before the Civil War, um, it was one of the first cities in America to legalize prostitution. Um, and there's a funny story behind that that I can't necessarily talk about on radio but uh not during the no dinner hour <laughs> but uh i'd like to hear it though at some point. I, I, I think i might type this up though and maybe share it somewhere you know, on the interweb so that you can have that um because it's kind of interesting history in general about america um prostitution is not something you want to get into no pun intended well um Nashville, in general, has, again, always been that dirty city place, while Asheville is this family-oriented, um, kind of hippie-ish, love-your-brother kind of place. And the two are kind of almost complete opposites. Everything down to their art and the way the street works and everything else. Oh, here we go. Hey, Robin. Robin. <laughs> well, we were we were talking a little bit about um, Nashville and the way everything kind of works in Nashville with street performance and how um, things could be better. Jim was talking about how uh, the rules change from day to day, and sorry, Jim, I gotta disagree with you. Uh, the rules change like from ship to ship. <laughs> they change ships, you know. <laughs> it's uh, it's like three times a day. Uh, I think the only thing we could do is just like keep persevering to to have better people play down there instead of the uh, the one string bandits. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so a little history on, on Mr. Robin here. Uh, Robin Bernard played a lot of music with, with Jim and I whenever we played with street bands in, in downtown Nashville. Uh, Robin is a guitar picker, but he came down and, and uh, played some bass for us, some wash tub. And he was super good, super good at what he does. Um, really, really awesome stuff. Um so if you go onto YouTube and you Google free dirt and you see this uh, long-haired fella playing the tub, that's Robin. <laughs> I'll give you a visual there. Um, uh, or if you watch Jug Face. Oh, yeah, what Jug Face. Yeah, you know? Jimbo and, and Robin and I were all in this film called Jug Face, which is actually a horror film. It was on Netflix for a while. It might still be. They've been playing on cable recently. But it's it's a horror film, that, like a B-horror film that was filmed outside of Nashville. And uh, oh, I'd be curious to know what, other, what our listeners' input is on that film and, and would love some reviews I've to tell a, you the truth. I've got a cousin that lives uh, in the Dubai area. She teaches, uh, she's like over the American schooling, schooling there. And, uh, uh, she's been passing around Joe's face and they've been watching right over here and they're, they're digging it. <laughs> yeah, this this film is pretty interesting. Uh, so yeah, if you could find it, it's called Jug Face. It was written by Chad Crawford Kinkle. <laughs> I love when I show up when I showed up for the wardrobe and and, and uh, makeup and everything, and they said we're looking for uh, poor uneducated, uneducated white trash. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got a shirt. That was it. <laughs> Everything else was fine. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> well, you're good. You, you dress the part. What? I dress like it every day. Y'all already go through the costumes? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah we, we definitely won on that one. That was, that was a fun experience. Now, um, Robin, what do you feel like could be changed in Nashville? Or what do you think could be or should be the first couple of steps? The first couple of things I need to do is enforce a noise ordinance, not for us out on the street, the street performers and the, uh, the people who are actually performing for nothing except tips. They should change it to where the bars don't play so loud. And they yeah. should make it to where we have, we have more... More, more in sight for the police instead of like they turn their turn their head anytime somebody's messing with us they turn their head but if it's a tourist they, they just jump on anybody I, I think uh, great performers are, are really like in Asheville they're, they're really a necessity for the tourism you know because people save money all their lives come on vacation and come down here and they want to hear the stuff that we play they don't want to hear stuff they can stay at home and listen on the radio, you know? Because uh, it's just, just got redone, really goddamn ridiculous. <laughs> Do you feel like people come to Nashville and they find it a little bit too polished? That they, they kind of want those those dirty, raw acts, like like as presented on the street? Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Uh, it's gotten to where it's like... Uh, I'm, I mean, not talking down about any cities, but it's gotten to where it's like Bill Street and Pensacola Beach. It's it's a uh, it's a party town, and a lot of people don't realize that the number one destination in the world for bachelorette parties now is Nashville. So uh, it's it's changing from music to where it's just a metropolitan let's get drunk party town. That's all it is anymore. And to me, that's that's horrible. It's it's a uh, desecrating the country name yeah now now here in Asheville we we've recently acquired some bicycle taverns and oh, God. okay so now now the now uh, I want to say this first off the bicycle tavern folks are very nice they've always been very very kind to me I'm gonna say that first off but when they did show up, there was a lot of folks, especially the street performers, who were kind of rolling their eyes, scared that the tourism was going to go down that road. You know, and the moment they saw that, they saw that as a sign of that drunk sorority girl, half naked, uh, falling down on yep. the street tourism like what Nashville has. And, and here we don't really have that. And, and, and it kind of scared a few yep. people. You just gave Nashville a plug. I don't like plug. it. <laughs> Well, I mean, first of all, who, who would uh, spend $30 and have to buy your own beer so you can cut yourself up and down hill? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know, when 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 those uh, pedals go around, it charges the internal battery of it. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's kind of a neat device, I guess. It looks fun. I don't know. I've never been on it. I've thought about maybe uh, sticking a bunch of buskers on it, going around in circle, playing music. That's a great idea. I don't think it's a great idea. Them nice. folks are super nice. They they really are. They're super nice. Why did you talk about that a long time? The guy, uh, mm -hmm. our buddy on the wagon, <clears throat> and uh, he he would like it on a slow night for me to get up there and play while he drives around. For the horse carriage. I'd be happy to. Yeah, we've I mean, we've got some carriages to here to too. That, you know, I would not be happy to do that because it would actually. It might give you more business, but it, you know, it helped me to, uh, Jim and Wade and Chick, yes. how you guys doing? Man, uh, we got to get together and play some time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, man. sir, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well... Robin, we're going to let you go, and I'm going to call in and check, with you, check in with you periodically if you're okay with that, and you can give us an update as to what's going on there. The official Nashville correspondent. Not at all. Not yeah. At all. Uh, whenever I finally got a hold of you, I went back, because I mean, the phone was dead in the house uh, for some reason, but I got a hold of you, went back in, there's like a 20 or 30 second delay, which is good because I have a habit of cussing right now and then without knowing it. <laughs> but, uh, now give me a call. Give me a call anytime. And, uh, you never know. Maybe I might show up on your doorstep. Uh, oh, I'd uh, love it. 
take me in, uh, take me in as a lost pet or something. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can come and hang out and play some tunes with us. Cool. Yeah, please do, and we're gonna find us a New Orleans correspondent too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, love you, love you guys, and uh, give me a holler anytime. All right, All right buddy. buddy. Can't love you too, buddy. Target. All right. Thanks, Robin. Bye, Robin. Okay. Bye, y'all. I love Robin. Oh, me too. All right, folks, that was Robin Bernard, our official WPVM Nashville busker correspondent. <laughs> love it. Yes, and uh, Robin's a smart guy. He's been out busking for, for decades now. Which is it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on out busking, folks. You, too, can make tens and tens of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> is, your skin, is your skin thin? Come on out. Toughen you up. Well, do you feel like maybe playing another track off of your CD? Uh, sure. Is that what you're wanting to do? Yeah, I don't know which one. Uh, what do you think, Wade? It doesn't Addicted matter to me. More? It doesn't matter to me. I love them all. Addicted to more. Which one all. is that? Addicted to more. That would be track number two, I think. Yeah, I think For it sure. is two. All right, well, we're going to play oh, another I'm track. Live. I'm sorry. We're, we're going to play another track of their newest album that they had just recorded. Now, uh, I'll, something I wanted to tell you folks is that these folks do not have a lot of social media stuff put up. I will be posting some links to them as they put up some some information and whatnot. I'm going to help them out a little bit over the next couple of days, get some stuff situated. Um, if you are interested, so in the meantime, though, if you are interested in talking to these folks, getting a hold of these folks, um, you can send us an email here at the station or, or, or abbyspoonlady at gmail.com or... or uh, I have a phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so so I'll be posting some links later in the day so that you have a, a good way to get a hold of these folks. And when I go to archive this show, there will also be a good way to get a hold of these folks. So make sure that you do so. And if you would like a copy of these this CD, then uh, perhaps it will be up later. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. So we're going to make it happen. All right, cool. Um, in the meantime, listen to this awesomeness that you're going to want to buy in a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, the the truth is, and folks don't don't realize um, that uh, busker CDs are extremely important, and and not just for for tagging and chronal, you know, and having that that physical evidence of existence, you know, and and research and whatnot else, but the the income that comes in off of CDs is hugely monumental and keeps roofs over people's heads. You know, Absolutely. and so if if you're into a band and you're listening to their music and you're consistently going to YouTube and listening to their videos, I highly suggest you go into their band pages or their whatever pages and purchasing a CD. Here, here. <laughs> so, that being said, here we go. Mm. I ain't hooked on trucks, but I'm gonna get another. I know I got enough guns, honey, but the ammo's cheap. I ain't hooked on to the things I do. I named our closed doors. I ain't hooked on much. I'm just addicted to more. Doors, I ain't hooked on much. I'm just addicted to more. 
as I do. Behind them dark clothes, drawers, I ain't hooked on much. I'm just a dick of the mold. I ain't hooked on to holding you. One thing that's for sure, I ain't hooked on much. I'm just a dick of the mold. No, I ain't hooked on much. Folks, we're back here at Busker Broadcast, poking at stuff with sticks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'm hoping, I'm thinking I might go through this broadcast later. I'm going to cut out a few bits and pieces, and I'm going to post it on some uh, Nashville uh, street performer, not street performers, but Nashville politics pages, just to see what chaos ensues afterwards <laughs> and how many people dislike me. Okay. I'll I go like for it. it. I like that idea. Well, and uh, I'm, I keep hoping somebody there will stand up and, and do something else about, about all these issues and everything else that's going on. Um, you need to come do it for us. <laughs> hey, I, I was in... Somebody's going to have to go to, to jail or get a ticket and go fight it in court. But... I don't think it has to go no. down to people going to, going to jail. I think, I think a lot of the issue comes... Somebody's going to have to tell the police no when they tell you you have to stop. I mean, you tell them no. No, not even that. Well. 
Uh, I I honestly think with Nashville, the first steps are to to go to your councilman. You got to go to your yeah, councilman. You got to the you got to go to the the public safety board in Nashville which is usually what these kinds of things fall under, although it deserves to be in the Public Arts Commission or under the Public Arts Board. Um, right. You know, and so you go to the Public Safety Council and you talk with them about finding uh, a plan that works for your downtown system and, and explain to them some of the things that you've learned um, throughout the years of busking and have people there to back you up. You know, and, and were somebody to put together something like that, I would show up. Um, I know some folks, you know, maybe some folks at a bus break in the UK would show up. They came here to Asheville and showed up for us. And Nashville's a huge deal, you know. I mean, as far as the, the busking cities go, it's extremely important to save that city for busking. And it's going down the tubes, and it's been going down the tubes. And police enforcement there just is just a side effect of the legislature behind it. I think the official stance, uh, as far as, like, they don't really want it there at all. Well, government-wise, I, I think it's just become an eyesore. pretty country boys and right. singer. Anger. Right. No, they want, they want all the money that's being made going into the bars. They, they want, I mean, that's that's what's in Nashville. Well, you know, and the truth is, is that Nashville is, is they complain a lot about the the way downtown looks, meaning, you know, all the panhandlers, all the, the one stringers, all the, all the nonsense, you know. Well, the, they lump us all into one category. Right. But the truth of the matter is, and when you bring it down to brass tacks, is that if you were to take the street performing there and let the the decent bands play and raise that bar, then there would actually be less panhandling on the strip. There would actually be less one well, one stringers. They would there would be less <laughs> of that riffraff. Like on there Venice was, Beach in California, how, how do they do it? You know, because there's a lot of street performers out there. Well, Venice Beach is is their system is it wouldn't work in Nashville. It's in California. Uh, that's <laughs> a totally different country. <laughs> Well, well, Na- Nashville is just is just kind of one of those places where, um, if they wanted a cleaner street, they would support Asheville. I, I mean, they would support um, street performance like the way Asheville does, and in the means that that it would raise the bar and create safety. Kind of a you know, you're talking about people who can gather and control crowds around an extremely crowded area, you know, and and. It's important, you know. All these, all these things in the downtown area are just kind of side effects of other things that are happening, you know. And so you got to kind of fix it at its, its source. It's one big street party down there. They're going to have, you know, right. drinking from bar to bar pretty soon, I believe. Yeah, they're going to start closing. They're widening the, down. the sidewalks like they are here. Might be fun. And maybe it'll, maybe it'll change big, things for the better. Though. It's either going to get better or worse. I just I don't think know. it's sad. I remember when we used to play and we were like, you know, like, welcome to Nashville, folks, home of country music. Maybe one day they'll let it come back. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Banjos. 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 Who don't love banjos? And what do we do with banjos? More banjos. More banjos. More banjos. <laughs> Oh, I saw All Them Witches was playing it in, uh, I saw on the scene, they are playing a pretty big show opening for someone. And they came here and played New Did Mountain they? not that long ago. Oh, All Them Witches is a Nashville band that we know. They're a little heavier than they what, what I'm used to playing. Yeah. They, they, but they rock in a good way. Yeah, very much so. Very yeah, much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, can hear, you can hear the lava lamps and the, and, and the metal. So do you do you feel like um, busking for you has changed your life in a positive way? Sure. I mean, uh, this is you know I've played all kinds of different places and venues, and playing on the street is is actually pretty intimidating at first. It's 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 more intimidating than a than a big room when you go out there for the first time. I don't know. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because you're just putting yourself out there, and you, 
you know, the audacity that I think someone needs to be subjected to this noise I'm making, you know, <laughs> and maybe even give me money for it, you know. It takes, uh, 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 what's the word? Grit. You can say that on the air. <laughs> yeah. And you see a lot of cool things, a lot of cool people. Playing on the street provides for excellent live television. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Do you consider yourself a professional people watcher? Professional people watcher, yeah. I spend some time getting watched and watch back. It's like Skype. Have you ever had your money stolen? Someone tried to do that to me and you once in uh, Richmond. Oh, yeah. In Richmond. <laughs> and someone grabbed it, and they ran. And Abby and I chased him. And when we got across the street, he dropped the money. And I stopped to pick up the money. And Abby kept chasing him, and she almost got him. And he's lucky that she did not get him. <laughs> True story. I think I was screaming, I ride trains. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you put goodness. the fear of spoons in him. That's for sure. <laughs> well, hopefully he won't do that again or hasn't. No. And that's the only time it's ever happened. But do you remember, oh, we were in New Orleans once, and a kid came up and asked for a lighter. And I gave him a lighter, and he just ran with it. Oh, I remember. It was the I remember that thing. one. Yeah, New Orleans is 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 one of those places where you kind of have to watch your belongings really close. Yeah, yeah, it grows legs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, did you hear that just recently they shut down Royal Street for the day, and they were trying to do it almost semi permanently. Shutting it down for the Shutting day. Shutting it down, meaning they said that they're because of the Paris uh, terror attacks that they were going to shut down Royal Street in New Orleans, no more performers, um, mm -hmm. because they had to have a safe route for access for, for emergency vehicles. Meanwhile, they were keeping Bourbon Street open, even at night, for them to be drunk in the middle of... I, I don't know, I'm guessing that's because massive herds of drunk people who can barely walk are easier to get through an emergency situation than buskers who can pick up their stuff and... Control crowds. Well, they do have a purple know. bulldozer. Oh well, that, that might work for them. You know, but but what had happened? Uh, I, I guess apparently they they had been talking about it since the Paris, the the Paris terror attacks, and when they decided to shut it down for busking um, and not let anyone go busking, they hadn't talked to any of the buskers, and so of course then the buskers were like, "Hey, you know what? What about us?" You know, we're important. We're people, too, you know. And um, and so by the end of the day, they decided to announce that they were going to reopen it. And I think it was kind of like, oh, 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 man, these people have voices. Oh, how'd that happen? <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of how it ends up being more and more is, you know, a lot of times cities will try to slip some stuff underneath or slip something through. Like even recently here when they had the boxes issue, nobody had, had contacted any of the people working on the busker situation, and even though we had been contacting them. And they came through with this idea to put us in boxes and we showed up full force going, oh, no, oh, no, you're not doing that to us. What do you mean boxes? Um, not that far back, about you know the beginning of the fall when stuff just first started cooling off here. The uh, city staff had written a pilot plan that meant that they would draw boxes on the sidewalk here in Asheville and um, make our performers and all their equipment would have to fit in those boxes. And these boxes were not small enough or weren't big enough for any kind of band whatsoever and a lot of them weren't even wide enough for like if I had my chair and my bells down I, I wouldn't be able to fit in the box you know because I'd be too long and there'd be no space for a case in front of you either and so now what this would have done you know would have created a lot more issues you know in the places that where there weren't boxes where people could bust and the big bands would go there creating more issues with the traffic because now they'd be playing at inappropriate spots and I mean there's a lot of different reasons why that doesn't work you know besides the fact that one performer can gather the same crowd as a whole band can if it's the right performer you know sure. so you know these things being said 
Um, but they had, they had pushed this through to, to go, or pushed it through. That's not really the right word, way to say it. Um, they, they had brought up this pilot plan to the city council, and they had just announced the agenda for this, this, this meeting, um, like, the Friday before the Monday meeting, instead of calling anybody or talking to anybody, and they did it at the very end of the day, the very last moment they, that, that they could have. Wow, you know, and so that so that being said, we still all showed up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm watching those agendas. I'm watching it. Oh, I know you are. <laughs> you know, and and we showed up, and and now the boxes issue is off the table. That's good. You know, and so it's a matter of showing so up and saying something. You can click outside something. the box. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's extremely true, you know. You can't, you know, put it in a box and stick a hotel on it and call it good. That's that doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Hmm. I don't know. What do you feel are the best ways to preserve street performance in general? Do y'all have any ideas? Better performances. Better performances. Legitimate musicians out there, not. Well then, but how do you create that atmosphere you, that you know, that brings in better performance from a, from a panhandling dude with a guitar? Well, to just judge a character. You just gotta. You can't, it's just you gotta talk to him. I guess you know. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Well, I I like I, I really. You know, we're talking about the reform. I think the reform down there that we need that what you know what you guys work on up here all the time and stay on it. We need that because that's going to make it comfortable and more desirable for the great players that do come through there and they're like play one night and they get enough of it. They're like, oh, we're done. We're leaving. We're going somewhere else. You know. So if we had if we had that better and start working on that, you know, where it, it is more desirable to play down there, we don't get hassled and all that stuff that we've been talking about gets resolved and we'll have better players. And like you said, when the bar gets raised, it does weed out the ones that go, man, well, I can my one string, I can't compete with these people anymore, you know, because there's too, many, too much good maybe, out there now. So so I look at it. Maybe have to pay for a permit that would weed out a lot of, you know, people that, I guess homeless. I guess they have guitars. Well, I I don't. Not that that's. I mean, I guess that's. I don't okay. have a problem you're with good. homeless people you're with good. guitars. You're homeless. Yeah, I was just guitar. about to say, hey man, I traveled around the the country homeless with spoons for a long time. I think I, the I best was way. Very I was homeless with a guitar too. You know, I don't. I don't. No. Go ahead. I think the best way to raise the level of performers and performing. Is to give us the most money possible. <laughs> you mean you mean tip the good ones and don't tip the bad ones. Tip the good ones, don't tip the bad ones. Natural selection will take care of itself. Okay. So or tip the bad ones if they're anyway. if, if you, you like them. If, if you're good, you get more tips anyway. <sighs> All right. Y'all got any shout outs or hellos you got before we uh, wrap up? We got about 10 minutes left of our our uh, broadcast here. I'd like to say hello to everybody that is planning on coming out and meeting us tonight as we play. So I'm going to do a pre hello. Yeah, that's right, folks. Make sure you get down this week and see these folks and chat with them. Support buskers and any ideas you can have for make it better. Oh, and we need a, we, it to Abby. we need a band name too. We're we're open to suggestions, so uh, we don't have a band name right now. We've been kicking around some ideas, but nothing's yeah, really stuck. Amtrak stick and poke. <laughs> what was that again? Oh yeah. <laughs> Amtrak stick and poke. My favorite favorite so far is Van Whalen, but that's just too funny. Van Whalen. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right. Well, uh, we play another song off your CD if you so feel like it. Oh, sure. Uh, which one haven't we played? Ooh. 
know. Let's play 1129. Which one is that one? Wade's going to look it up right quick and, and see. I really like the way it sounds. Y'all did a good job putting well, this together, you. and I think it sounds great. Thank you, Miss Abby. It's All right, then that's going to be... Uh, I'll put it in this bag. <laughs> well, I'd say that probably in the uh, in the morning, probably four, or which one? Or, or, oh, I was saying eleven twenty nine. We play. Oh, want that liquor in your voice? Yeah, I like that too. It's pretty cool. Let's do that. It's number three. Let's try number three. Number three. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I. No. I, you can't do that one. Yeah. Oh, we can't do that. I can't play that one on the radio. Yeah. Because so let's just it's, do it's, number. It's got a no no. Let's word. just do number four. Okay. And folks, uh, just, you know, that being said, there, there's only one track with a no-no word on the CD. Don't you worry. <laughs> Here we go. Well, I'm working in the morning, working in the night, drinking in the evening, and you're drinking in the light. Disagree with me even when I say you're right Maybe we can love about it in the morning Well, the thing you love about me is the thing you want to change Since you can't stand me, why, why you want my name? We both got a thirst, let the guitar first You can drive me crazy while I finish this verse Can't bend me, won't break me If you want me, you gotta take me Anyway, I try, I try, we can't get along Maybe we can fight about it in the morning It was all games of fun I saw you saw me for me And I knew that you the one Crazy as a bird And hot as a gun The weather said chance for tomorrow Yeah, I was first locked It was all fun and games I knew you saw me for me And I saw you for the same Dreams that last All before it's past And they can always cancel tomorrow And I don't bend you Don't break me If you want me You gotta take me Anyway, I try, I try We can get Long, baby, we can fight about it in the morning Yeah, don't bend me, can't break me yeah. If you want me, you gotta take me Anyway, I try, I try
When the night turns to day, I won't have hell to pay. Cause she ain't got my number anymore. So I mix it and mix her. I'll be to fix her. Just get it. Folks, you've been listening to Busk Broadcast, and I'm Abba's Spoon Lady, and we're signing off. Um, we've had a pretty good broadcast here. We've had Wade Battle and Jimbo Lockhart and Chick Curtis in here from Nashville talking about Nashville versus Asheville and how we can make both places better. Um, if you're interested in getting involved in the Asheville Buskers Collective, you can contact us at at avlbuskers.org or Collective at gmail.com or find us on Facebook. If you're interested in finding out how to volunteer for this radio station or have some feedback for us, you can get a hold of us at wpvmfm.org or you can find us on Facebook. You can also find me, Abby the Spoon Lady, on Facebook or Abby the uh, uh, Spoon Lady Music.com. Or you can like me in real life and find me busking. Or you can find our lovely friends here out busking all week. Make sure you stop by and say hello. Tell them you heard them on the radio. And uh, welcome them to Asheville. Another quick note real quick is remember to buy local. Meaning this Christmas, everybody is hit by by the fact that the tour season kind of dwindles. And so... Um, when you're doing your Christmas shopping, remember to think about your local artists and and so on and so forth and to take a good look downtown around your galleries and keep that money here. So uh, just wanting you to know, I'm going to start us off a little bit uh, with uh, some old time music and we'll drift on into the end of our hour. Hope you have a good night. You're listening to WPVM 103.7 FM in Asheville. You can listen online at wpvmfm.org.